Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video I want to show you how you can add water reflections to your game. Let's get started. So one thing I want to make really clear about how this tutorial works before we get started is actually this is very much dynamic. So if I add in a couple more objects such as another tree and another bush this will automatically put in the new reflections for me without me having to do any more calculations or manually place these. This is why I really like this method of creating reflections. So how does it all work? Well, the first thing that we need to do is create a new sprite and this will be on a layer called water and reflections. Water and the reflections do need their own layer, which means you need at least two layers for this tutorial. I know this might be a bit of a challenge if you're on the free version. What we need to do is insert a new object. I'm just gonna scroll down, grab a sprite, and Call it water. Click anywhere, grab a color blue and just fill it in. We're going to add an effect on top to make it look more like water anyway so it doesn't matter how much detail we put into the color. I recommend to take this and cover the whole screen with it. I'll just cover part of it. Um, we want to add an effect straight away to this. So we're going to right click, add an effect. And the effect that we're going for is called the water effect if I spell it correctly. Now you'll see straight away that this is changing the way the sort of water looks and if I run this you can see exactly what it does. It's a really really simple and useful effect. However it's a bit extreme for what we're after. So I'm going to tone down all these settings by quite a bit. So for the speed I recommend 3% for the X speed and Y speed 5% each. The intensity down to 2, the frequency down to 2, the angle you can leave at 7. And then the delta, this one you've got to be really careful with because it works the opposite way. A bigger number gives a reduced effect. So maybe about 40 and drop the reflexity down by half. This is going to be something that's a little bit more suitable than what we're after. But again, you can play around with these numbers if it's still a little bit too extreme for what you need. But it's just a very, very subtle effect that goes quite a long way into breathing a bit of life into your water. Next, we actually need to create a new layer above this. So we're just going to right click inset layer above, I'm going to call this grass. Now to do with this we're just going to add a new object, scroll down, grab a sprite and we'll call it grass. Just click anywhere and I'm just going to quickly just block something out really quickly and just place that round and essentially we want to cover the water with our land. Now I did try and find a way around not having to do this, so you could just place water instead of having to place grass over it, but I've struggled to find a way to do this that works successfully and gets the effect that I'm after. So this is not the most ideal way, but it is a method that does work. So you can literally cover your land in grass. Now the other option you can use is you can use a tile map, which is what I'm using in the demo that I showed you. And it'll look a little something like this. So tile maps is another approach that you could use to surround your water. And again, remember you're surrounding your water, your water still needs to be a background. But once you've got that, you can start placing your objects in the world, especially the ones that you want to reflect. So for instance, one of the things I want to reflect is my player. So I'm gonna place my player in the world. I also want to have a couple of trees that reflect. So I'm just gonna place these in the world as well, just like so. I also want to have a couple of bushes, so I just place these around my water as well. And we are reflecting from above downwards. Obviously you could change this effect if you want to get a different angle, but we're going to keep this nice and simple in this tutorial. I'm also going to place some long grass in the water as well. So I've set up my little scene. At the moment nothing's going to be reflected. We've still got a little bit of work to do. Let's start with the objects that we've just placed in. So I'm going to start with my tree and I need to set up some new image points. So currently the origin is set up quite high. I just need to go down and create a new image point. And this one needs to be at the bottom of the tree. This is where we're going to reflect from. So we just need to do that of each object. So I'll also go to my bush, edit, add a new image point and just place it at the bottom. And then just keep repeating for the other objects such as the bush and of course the player. And again, this is where we're going to be reflecting from. If you have this slightly lower, your reflection will be slightly further down. So maybe if your player is on a high ledge, you might want to increase this origin point to make it further down. But for now, I'm going to go really simple and just place it at the bottom. Once we've got that, we can now move to the top of our screen. And we need to take all the objects again and set up a clone of them. So I'm going to click on my tree. 
I'm going to clone it, but I don't want to call it tree two. I'm just going to rename it. So rename it to tree reflection. And I'm just going to put that just at the top somewhere, just so we've got an instance of it. And I'm just going to repeat for the other objects. So there's all my objects in. And just make sure that you go to something like your player and just remove any sort of behaviors that you've added to. Same for any of your other reflections as well. So we've got these objects in now. Let's start by doing a really, really simple reflection first. We're just going to go to our main event sheets. We're going to add an event system. I'm going to scroll down till we see on start of layout. We're also going to right click and add another condition. System. Scroll down. And we want this for each. And we'll start for the trees first. So for each tree. I'm going to add an action. I'm going to add it to my tree. And what I want to do is scroll down and spawn another object. And what I want to do is I want to actually spawn a tree reflection. In terms of layer, this can be on layer zero, which is our water reflection. But what I recommend is put in speech marks. So if you change put another layer below, you still get the same layer without having to rewrite all your code. Image point is going to be image point one. We're then going to go to tree reflection. And we're going to scroll down. And we're going to do set position. And what we're going to do is self dot image point x, y, and we just want the image point one. And then do the same again, self dot image point y, one. So it's matching its image points that we've set up earlier. And then finally, we're just going to go to tree reflection, scroll down and set flipped. And let's do our first test. So you see that we've got the trees now in the water already being reflected. Now there's a couple of other things that we want to do to our trees to make the effect a little bit better than what it is at the moment. So let's have a look at those next. First thing we're going to do is add another action to our tree reflection. I'm going to drop the opacity. Now I recommend around about 30%, you can play around with these numbers. The second thing is it's very static. So we want some sort of movement with our tree as well. So I'm going to click on my tree reflection. And I'm going to add an effect. Now, unfortunately, if you're using Construct Free, you can only add up to two effects in a project, which means you won't be able to add this to all your objects. However, you could add it to your whole layer, and this could be a way around that, but the effect won't be as good. So I'm just going to click my tree, add an effect, and the effect that I want is the warp object effect. Press add, and then we're just going to click off. Now, this is going to make our tree look very, very weird. We need to change a lot of these settings. So we're going to change these all to 0.5, except from the X amplitude, which I put to 0.3, and the X speed, which is 0.5. We're going to have that small distortion effect that appears. So if I go right to the bottom of the tree, you'll see that it's moving ever so slightly. It's very, very subtle, but it works really, really well. So we can take this code, copy and paste it a couple more times. And we're just going to right click and replace object. So the first one's going to ask which object would you like to replace? We need to replace both of them. So we'll start with the tree first and we'll replace it with the bush. And then we'll just right click again, replace object. We want to now replace the tree reflection with the bush reflection. And the last one we'll just right click and obviously replace our tree with our long grass. Now notice that I'm not doing the player just yet. We've got to do a couple more things before we look at the player because the player is moving as well. So that's going to be a bit more of a challenge. But you can see that we've got all our basic reflections set up. So let's tackle our player next. So what we're going to do is take our player reflection. And we're going to set the angle to 180. And flip it around the opposite way. We're then going to go back to our main code. Add an event. And we're going to make this every tick. What we're going to do is take our player reflection scroll down and set the position and the position that we're going to set up is going to be player dot image point at x and then we're going to put image point one and the same for y player dot image point y 
Now we also just need to go to our player reflection and unlike our other code where we've got origin point and an image point, it is just much easier if you just set your origin point to be the spot below. So just set that to the bottom of the image and that just solves a lot of headaches. Next we need to set the opacity so we can do this with an action or we can just click on our player reflection and just set the opacity to 30% which is the one I'd recommend because it only does it once as opposed to every tick. Finally, we also need to mirror our player, so I'm just going to add an action, and this can be done with a start of layout, but just to save some time, player, scroll down, and set mirrored, and hit done. Finally, before we test this, we're just going to go back to our layouts, click on our player reflection, and just make sure it's on the water and reflections layer already, okay? This is the only one that needs to be on the water reflection layer. If the others are on the grass, it's not the end of the world because we're moving it when we spawn it this one we just need to make sure it's always on the water reflection so let's do a test to see what this looks like and you can see now that we've got our player in the water i can move down and see it a little bit closer as well and as i move away from the water it disappears and because it's on that bottom layer as well as we get a little bit closer we see a little bit more this is where i also talked about you can maybe move the image point down a little bit so if i just go to my um, play reflection and just drop this image point down. So currently it's set to 16. If I go down to about 18, that will go 20 so you can see this effect a bit more. It just means you can see the whole player instead of just part of the player, which we just had in the original demo. So now I can see more of the player because I've dropped that image point further down. And I could do the same with my bush to my trees if I want to see them at a lower point. The game is still going to generate reflections for these trees. Even though they're nowhere near the water, which means it actually won't see the reflection, we're still generating those sprites, which is just going to cause lots of lag. So how do we fix this? Well, option number one is we actually reduce the water layer right down. Then what we can do is we can go to our main coat. If tree reflection is overlapping water, invert, and then destroy. And this is one method that we can apply to all of our objects in order to fix that issue. However, I have got a slightly different bit of code that is a bit longer, that means that we can have this water still fill in the entire level, like we did before, and is more likely to delete objects than the method I've shown before. Because the method, unfortunately, that I've shown before means that the water still needs to be a square or you need to place multiple water tiles. So how do we approach a problem like that? So we need to insert a new object, and we're going to scroll down until we find sprites. We're going to call this a marker click and we're just going to fill it in anything I'm just going to pick a bright colored yellow and fill it in and I'm going to make this nice and small and more importantly I'm going to go to Z elevation and I'm going to set it to about 10,000 this is going to make it disappear right up into the air and we'll probably never see it again we're then going to move over to our marker add a new behavior and we want to add in the line of sight behavior Next, we're going to set the obstacles to custom, and we can always increase the range slightly. Finally, we're going to go into our main code. We're going to add an event, and we'll start with our tree reflection. We'll scroll down, and we'll say on created. We can then right click and add a blank sub event. Now, this sub event is only going to activate once when the tree is created, and we just want to see if our marker can see it. So, we're going to say if marker has line of sight of object, tree reflection, hit done, and then we're just going to invert that to say that it does not have line of sight, and then destroy it. So we're still creating lots of tree reflections, but we're destroying them straight away if they do not meet our requirements. Now for this, we also need to tell it what the line of sight is. So we need one more event where we're going to go to system, on start of layout, marker, and go down to the line of sight objects. And we're just going to add an obstacle. And I'm going to set this to my grass tiles, but obviously if you're creating grass sprites, you would set it to the grass sprites. Now, there's one issue with this method. Why it's going to be more accurate, and it's more likely to get rid of trees that don't exist, when it's looking for line of sight, actually it's just looking for the image point. 
So it's looking for this point here. Can it see it? Now, if I just take this tree, for example, and just flip it upside down as my reflection and place it here, you can see that actually, if I reflect it a little bit further down, this bit is not in the water, which means it doesn't think it can see it and it will destroy it. This is not ideal. And there's gonna be some objects where only part of it is in show. So the solution for this is that we go back to our tree reflection. So I'm gonna just scroll up and find it. I'm gonna add in additional points for the line of sight checker to find. So I'm just gonna go in, we've got image point one, we need to make sure that one stays in the right place. Image point two, I'll place in this corner and I'm just placing it at the key points. Now I recommend maybe just four of these, but think about your image and where it might be needed. In fact, I'm gonna place five, I'm gonna place one in each corner and I'll repeat this for my different objects as well. Again, this is very much about light prevention. If you're making a small game, you might not care about this part of the tutorial. Next, we can go back to our main and where we've got image point zero here, we're just gonna copy and paste this code a couple of times and just change the values for image point one, two, and I think I had up to five different image points on there, three, four, and five. And that's our final code. We can then repeat that for our objects. Stuff like long grass might not need as many of these image points to be checked. But again, all we're doing is trying to prevent all this extra lag from building up, especially if we've got a lot of these trees in the seat. But that is it for But that is it for today. We have a really, really simple water reflection that you can start placing in your games. It just looks really, really good. It just adds that extra detail to your water, makes the world feel a little bit more alive. And But that is it for today's video. We've got a water reflection that works with moving objects we can just add a brand new object to the world and it'll automatically do the reflection for us. So once this is set up, this works really, really well. You could also add this to a family, which will save time a bit more of our code. But overall, a really, really simple method to create some really, really nice water reflections. And finally, thank you very much for watching.